the United States government has said it does not consider the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB a terrorist organization. Last week, the Federal High Court in Abuja gave a judicial backing of the executive order of President Muhammadu Buhari outlawing the group and its activities in the country. Joining us via Skype from Belgium is Global Affairs Policy Analyst Collins Nweke. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here, Fadeshola. Now, tell us, how relevant do you think is the United States' um, decision not to consider IPOB a terrorist organization? Yeah, I, I don't think it's uh, pretty um, relevant. Uh, it is pretty relevant because um, in the fight against uh, terrorism, I believe that uh, the United States um, you know, plays a major role. Uh, now, if you take the uh, position of the United States uh, in isolation, it will weigh uh, rather light. But if you take it in combination with the fact that um, just a couple of days ago, the um, uh, European Union also made a similar uh, statement uh, to the effect that uh, they do not consider IPOP, uh, indigenous people of uh, Biafra, as a terrorist uh, organization, then you get a fuller picture of uh, the sort of uh, problem, I believe, that uh, the government of Nigeria has actually uh, put themselves with uh, this um, uh, latest uh, movement. All right. Uh, but then the presidency insists that uh, it will still carry on with uh, this uh, prescription of IPOB, uh, I mean, Mr. Oboy now was still talking tough now on the meaning of this. Uh, but tell us what um, you think now, what will happen to this uh, Biafran course now that activities around Biafra has been outlawed in Nigeria? Well, I believe that um, uh, by and large, the government of Nigeria appear to think that uh, they are on the right, on their right course when they decided that um, uh, IPOB would have to be classified as a terrorist organization because the uh, ultimate purpose is actually to shut down the organization. Uh, but doing so, uh, they want to use the opportunity first and foremost to shut down the flow of funds coming to them. Now, in their calculation, I believe that the government had uh, felt that individuals, uh, especially those abroad, who have been financing the activities of uh, iPod, uh, were in their right to do so because uh, iPod could be considered as any other organization. Now, they felt that if iPod ultimately was uh, classified as a terrorist organization, those people would no longer be in their rights in financing it. So that was the first step, but uh, from the look of things, uh, that step was miscalculated. Now, it does look to me that uh, the quality of uh, advice that uh, the presidency is getting, especially on this uh, matter, is uh, it's a very, very poor one. Uh, because um, ultimately, it does look like uh, iPod is said to actually be more popular hmm. post-classification as a terrorist organization than they were before when you know the classification so uh, i think uh, the government is faced with uh, a major challenge here collins we understand that um, the indigos have a match slated in belgium for today how significant is that match well it is very significant because um, as you know um, brussels uh, is de facto capital of uh, of europe a major institution of the uh, European um, uh, Union, uh, which is the European Parliament, has its uh, sitting here. The uh, Commission President, uh, President of uh, the European um, uh, uh, Parliament, they all are positioned here in, uh, in Belgium. And the Nigerian ambassador to Belgium uh, and Luxembourg is also accredited to uh, the European Union. So indeed, yes, uh, it is uh, significant. And uh, the fact that uh, not only Ndibo in, uh, in Belgium, but also other ethnic uh, groups, friends of Nigeria, 
and uh, you know other nationalities joined in the march and approved by uh, the government of uh, of Belgium in terms of um, you know positioning uh, the police to assist them in seeing that everything uh, goes very well. Uh, all of these um, you know make uh, make it very relevant and uh, significant. And uh, so far, I believe that uh, the government of uh, Nigeria, represented by the embassy. Uh, is handling it well because uh, they have been granted an uh, audience okay. uh, to enable them to express the purpose of, uh, of uh, their protest. And so, yes, uh, it is uh, a relevant um, uh, activity. But then we've seen, uh, the well, ahead of um, the match now, we've seen the press release from the Indigo Group now. They're asking for a referendum uh, on the um, issues of marginalization of um, the eastern Nigeria. And they're also asking that the army should be uh, totally called off now. They should leave uh, the, the southeastern part where they have been uh, on now, trying to uh, you know, prevent a breakdown of law and order. Uh, but there is a lingering discussion on restructuring the whole of Nigeria now. Sh sh should this uh, demand now by the Indigo worldwide now, should, can't we just broaden it to uh, mean a restructuring of the whole nation? It is an ongoing uh, discussion, and uh, I believe that um, uh, Ndibo in Belgium are within their, their rights and indeed um, their um, obligation to uh, make any sort of uh, demand that uh, they wish to make. Now, it is up to the government to um, you know, sit down, welcome them, and then outline to them which of the demands that they have made that they consider reasonable and acceptable and those that they believe that may be right, but the time is just not right. So it is a matter of how government uh, responds to this. I mean, this is um, basically the first uh, step. And uh, the fact that um, the embassy of Nigeria opened their doors, welcomed them in, and said, sit down, let us uh, you know, hear what you have to say, is indeed um, a very, very respectful uh, way of dealing with people. One could have only hoped that the government of Nigeria, and I mean successive uh, governments of Nigeria since uh, 1999, when uh, civil rule came back, uh, if they had that level of understanding of not simply throwing away requests and agitations of, uh, of people, you know, that they sit down, get people talking, you know, dialogue, uh, I think things uh, wouldn't have uh, degenerated to the uh, stage where it is now. So it doesn't really matter how high or how low the demands that uh, the uh, Ndibo in Belgium have put on the table is, I think what matters is the fact that the government is ultimately willing to dialogue, mm. ultimately willing to say, yes, we can do this, right. or no, I wish we can we, do we, this. We, we have to leave it there now. Although the Indigo actually say they are at a loss as to why a pub has been branded a terrorist organization. And you beg to ask the questions. Um, are they not aware that um, there was, there's was there been ethnic bigotry and the fact that IPOP has actually formed an army in the country? Collins Wake, Global Affairs Policy Analyst, thank you for joining us on TVC News Hour. Thank you for having me.